submission that Juan Espino did. He did what's called the scarf hold submission. There's a few names. It's a head and arm variation. You're going to go against people that make a big mistake here and keep their hands locked in this position. Okay, you never want to lock your hands here in side control. It might, you, you see a lot of uh, MMA fighters do this because if you clinch the guy real tight, then it's hard for me to hit you very well. I can't, I can't posture up here and start landing strikes. Um, but even for MMA, it's not a good idea because it's really just a matter of time before they frame on you, they can break it, and you're in a bad position again. Or what's much worse is if they're able to mount you because if, they, if, if I go into the mount with this right here, your arm is very, very exposed. Okay, so what Juan Espino did is he went into the mount when his opponent made this big mistake here, locking his hands. So we wanna make sure that we are able to mount and dismount correctly, okay? So we're gonna start here. We have this head and arm control. He's got head and arm control on me. So what I'm gonna do is first take my knee, bring it on top of the hip. And I'm gonna take my time as I go into the mount here. All right, don't do a big step. Very big common mistake here. If I take a big step over into the mount, he could catch my leg in half guard. And now I'm in a much worse position. So make sure you're real smooth with this transition into the mount. As we go into the mount, I wanna take this hand up and go real high with it, up top. Sometimes his grip breaks and we can put him in the comb over. Okay, this uh, pre-head and arm position. Other times it doesn't break and I'm in the mount. If it doesn't break, we wanna make sure we stabilize real well because he has a, an ability to bridge on me. So we wanna make sure that uh, we're stable anytime we're in the mount position. Always, our first thought is thinking about if our opponent is gonna bridge into us. Now, he's still making this mistake where his arm is exposed. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna windshield wipe and do a knee on belly to the opposite side. I wanna bring my body off into side control on the side of his trapped arm here. So I keep my hands locked. I'm gonna windshield wipe my opposite side leg, bring my shin across his belly and start moving out. See, I can base wide here with my leg. Now the last part we're gonna do is now we're gonna dismount. So I'm just gonna slide my knee to the mat here on the inside. And then now we're in good position to start working a submission. Yeah, there's a few variations here. Um, I'll show you the one that uh, Espino did where he had a high hit, which is um, a lot of the time it's, it's risky. And in general, this move is risky. But if you have good balance and base, you can finish. So from here, even if his hands are still locked, I'm gonna make sure that I hook my arm under his elbow and uh, by his shoulder here with my gable grip, okay? Now all I'm gonna do is slide my hip under his shoulder here and bring my hips off the mat. I don't wanna be sitting here or else the weight is on my butt. I wanna make sure the weight is in my partner's chest. Now all I'm gonna do is keep my grip tight. I'm gonna lean my body weight into my partner's chest and I'm gonna try and take his head to his legs. Okay, nice and slow, hips up and then pull here. Okay, big bridge or big, uh, big extension, big pull across the body. It's like part spine crank and sometimes you can suffocate this guy. This is typically known as a bit of a strength move. So if you're like, you know, if your opponent has 50 pounds on you, this might not be the move to do. But if you guys are somewhat of equal size and you have a decent squeeze, you don't have to be, you know, uh, Juan Espino, you don't have to be the Hulk to do this. But as long as you have a decent strength, then you'll, you'll be able to finish this one. So another, uh, High level detail on this is trying to get the compression lock. Okay, he's up here. So sometimes you can just muscle him and you can just go boom and, and tap him out with power. Okay, and that's kind of what Espino did. But I would say at a high level of Jiu Jitsu, you want to think about the compression and cutting off his breathing. All right. So whenever you're you have your partner in this situation, I want you to feel for his breath. Okay, what we're looking for is when our opponent exhales. Okay, when our opponent exhales, their lungs are empty of breath, right? And that's when we really wanna sink our weight down. 
Okay, so what I'm gonna start with is the basic squeeze where I bring my hips up and I bring them across. And then I'm just gonna wait for him to take a breath in. And then when he takes a breath out, that's when I'm gonna really sink down. He'll try and breathe again, a little bit of breath in. And then I'm gonna feel when he takes another breath out and I'm sinking my hips away and I'm dropping my back on his chest. Okay, really working the compression. That's when people tap out a lot. You know, a lot of people are tough and they're not gonna tap out from that one. But if you are sensing when they're breathing in and when they're breathing out, you can time when you really drop and crunch all your weight on. And that's what I want you to work on is feeling their breath pattern, really making them pay. because I was grabbing his neck, if you remember. We were in the mount and he dismounted and I'm still here. So what the first thing we wanna try is if we can get our elbow low, okay? See how he's hooking my elbow here with the forearm, okay? This is blocking me, but I was watching even some of you guys, you, you kinda were just focusing on this head and you weren't hooking the elbow, like kinda elevate your elbow up. Like widen your elbow out, yeah, like bring it out. If you bring your elbow out, I can slide my elbow down and now I can body lock. Okay, so that's the first thing, is locking around our partner's body. If he's doing the right thing, he can hook under my elbow here. No, keep your hands locked. But he can hook my elbow with his forearm and now I can't get it down. So the first thing we wanna look for is if he's doing it properly. If he's not doing it properly, he's loose on my elbow, I can just bring my elbow down and body lock him. All right, so now, once we have the body lock, first counter is gonna be a bridge back. Okay, I wanna bridge over to, like directly over my inside shoulder. Okay, I wanna bridge into him this way. Okay, not like this. I'm not trying to turn my chest down. I'm trying to take my partner's head to the mat. That's kind of the goal here. So I lock around the waist real tight with a, any grip that works, anything that's tight that feels good for you. And then I use my feet, I bring my hips in the air and, and drive my partner's body weight up at this angle, okay? Here, now you can keep it a little tight on me. Now, as soon as I get them this way, now our weight is up by my shoulders. It's not so much on my chest. And that's really the goal. I don't want him to sag on me. Here, oh, now I can't bridge. I have to be able to get the weight in the shoulder here. Now once, I'm, once I've got him loaded, now I can roll him directly across my shoulders. Okay, this way. Now even if you still got the headlock, I have top position here. I have my underhook. And now I'm dominating. I can get into my own head and arm. First thing is always looking to see if we can get this elbow down, okay? Sometimes we can't, um, but sometimes we can, all right? If we cannot, the first move we want to look, it's, this is a two-parter, because I, I forgot about hooking the head too. It's a good time to hook the head. If, if he's got my elbow stuck, something that we could do is call it a jaws of life. So I'm gonna just take a grip, I lock my hands with the ball and socket, I put it right under the neck and I try and get his head back. Okay, try and get it back and down my body. I, I don't want him hiding his head like this. Okay, then I, then I can't hook it. So I'm trying to get my grip underneath the chin and extend my arms. Now all I have to do is hook his leg with my knee. Be nice when you do this, okay, because it hurts. And then when I hook the head, let go of your grip a little bit so it doesn't hurt you because my leg is stronger than your arms. So I create some space here, and I'm just gonna uh, bring my legs up and hook my partner's head here. Okay, once I hook the head, if he's still on you, lock your hands right here, all you're gonna do is just extend this leg out, putting pressure on your partner's head and neck. Eventually his grip's gonna break. You keep extending until you're able to sit up. 
Now once you're able to sit up, it's important that we don't keep our legs up high over here. We want to kick our legs back and just get on our knees. And I'll